All right. Hello. We are back again with another special edition of the Ode Chronicles. Um, I'm Libby, your moderator, and tonight I am joined by Shannon McCormick. Did I say your last name right? Yeah, you did. All right. So Shannon, uh, Shannon's with us tonight. She is signed up for our 2021 Ode to Laz Backyard Ultra Marathon, and, uh, and she is going to have a chance to win herself a golden ticket this year. <laughs> so this is our 15 minutes of fame, Shannon, and your 15 minutes, let me get my timer, hang on, <laughs> is going to start right now. <laughs> right. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you coming from? Are you in Michigan? I am in Michigan. Yeah, I'm like the Grand Rapids area. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And is this this is not your first time doing the ODE. No, I did ODE last year. Um, so I signed up and I actually like had already had campsites reserved for the original dates in July. So I did kind of the like fun run events that they put on. Technically I won that one because I lasted like eight laps and nobody else uh, went quite as far. Okay. Um, and then I did the actual ODE last year. Um, I did 13 laps. Awesome. And then I did um, the eight hours of ODE this winter and I ran it continuous and did nine laps. Oh. Oh, which day were you on Saturday or Sunday Sunday the second okay. day okay yeah. yeah I was on Saturday so yeah. that was a fun one huh <laughs> it was fun yeah it was a good time it was yeah. so I had to wear um traction like everybody did and uh fun fact I've never lost my big toenails before but eight hours of traction that did it <laughs> do it what kind of traction device did you have I had the cadence but like the the exo spikes um, okay. so they're like a little, not quite as like the crazy spikes, like the micro, micro spikes. They were great, but they yeah. were just a little tight after eight hours. Yeah. It puts pressure. I think any of those, the way they mm -hmm. fit, they put pressure right on that big toe. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh, I know what I, I started off with my traction and then I borrowed some shoes from Sarah Moore. She had, she had drilled screws into some yeah. shoes. Yeah, I saw that. Because the traction was killing my feet. The bottom of my feet yep. were hurting, you know, after a couple yep. laps. And so then I switched to those. And then I did the last lap with zero traction. And that was a mistake. <laughs> I cannot even imagine. You definitely, like, I'm not a huge, I'm a minimalist when it comes to running, but you needed it that day. Oh, Mine yeah. did not bother me at all on that day. It wasn't until like a couple days later. And like, I couldn't even sleep. They were like, when they finally just died and quit hurting it was it was much better <laughs> oh god so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have you keep your toenails this year for july okay. <laughs> okay. i appreciate that <laughs> okay um so what keeps you coming back to this race well for me like last year i was injured in may and uh like part of april and may and so I didn't really put in a lot of training like I hadn't really done any high mileage not a lot of back to back runs and so I'd like to go back and like see what I can do that and it's also just really fun I mean it's just such a great um, community around it and then of course like meeting Sarah and like the rest of like the O family and everybody like everyone's so great and so I just uh just even if you go and you don't have a great day it's so fun to just hang out and see everybody and cheer everybody on. Yes, exactly. That's, and that's exactly what we would love to tell people who are considering to do the race. You know, yeah, you don't definitely. have to plan on going super far, just come and check it out. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you finish early, then you just get more time to hang out and drink beer and yeah, have a good time. <laughs> right. Want the pros go at it. Yeah. <laughs> Cheer everybody on. So, so I believe Tad had told me that, you know, we had sent out a little survey this year about what you, what people would think their minimum lap goal would be. And I believe you had told Tad a minimum of 24 laps is what you were hoping for. That's the plan. Yes. Okay. Have you, have, would this be a personal best for you or have you done this? It that? would, it would be a personal best. So my personal best is still that 13 laps or 54 miles um, okay. from last year. Um, I was planning on doing hundred earlier this year, but it got deferred. And so I still haven't, I haven't hit that distance yet. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to get it this year for you. All right? <laughs> <laughs> we won't let you quit. <laughs> no, if any place I could do it, I feel like just everybody there and the energy of the day is really going to keep me in. And I feel yeah. like I'm, I feel like I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. So what do you fear the most about your return to the course this summer? Oh, wow. 
You know, I don't know. I don't think I really have a big fear about it. I mean, there's always falling, I guess, twisting an ankle. That's always the biggest fear when it comes to trail running of everything. I'd say that's probably the only one. Okay. Um, is anything else, even if I, something blows up and I don't make a lap, then I don't, I don't really fear that. Like it would be a bit of a bummer, but yeah. So I guess, I guess the sprained ankle is the only fear for me. Okay. Yeah. We, we've had a couple of those on course before. Yeah. So just everybody be careful. Um, especially if it's raining can get pretty, pretty slippery on some of the routes and stuff. Um, is there a specific area of the course that you find most enjoyable if you can? Yes, actually there is. So I don't know. So, I mean, having done the trail loop so many times, like you just get in this mode where you know exactly where you walk, exactly where you run. And I remember there's someone with me during that eight hours of Odin. I was like, no, we're getting to this spot where it's like, just enough incline that you can walk, but not, that you're justified in walking, but it's not so steep that it's like strenuous and it's yeah. a long walk. And that is my favorite part because <laughs> okay. you, you know what's coming up and you know, you have your, your timing down. You're like, this is where I walk and it's a nice, long, gradual climb and it's a good yeah. spot to look forward to. Yeah. My, my favorite spot is where you see the sign that you only have like, what, like a 0.4 left or something. <laughs> you're like, you're like turning the corner. Into, yeah. yeah. Oh, now you're talking about it. There's so many. Yeah. Cause then there's like, after you pass, of course, like every time you go through a parking lot, you know exactly how far. And then like you see yeah. the cabin as you come around that one corner. Um, there's that one spot where the algae is really green and you're almost at the end. There's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. yeah just, yeah. They get, you get to know them really well. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> After that many laps, for sure. <laughs> is there, and I, it's kind of silly to ask, but is there a spot that you fear the most? Cause I think most of us who run that course before just like a certain section. I mean, I think it's that end where it's so rooty. That's where it gets oh. really, really rooty is that end part. And I think yeah. that would probably be the worst of it. I love, so stairway to heaven doesn't scare me. I love climbing so that's always that's one of my it favorite just kills too. me every time <laughs> <laughs> sucks sucks the life right out of me yeah so. do you practice uh doing stairs do you practice uh, a lot of hills or I do so I mean this year hills has been a big focus of mine this year like I did um rim to rim to rim back in um April okay so there was a fair amount of elevation and then I just did quest for the crest back in about a month ago in May and that actually, even though it's less distance, it has more vert than the Grand Canyon does. Is that the Teton Crest? No, it's Quest for the Crest. So it's um, Mount Mitchell in North Carolina. Oh, okay. But it's, I mean, you're just like straight up a hill and then down a hill and then back up a hill. It's like the course is, it's more climbing than it is any anything else. Okay. It's very little of it's runnable, but it's a, That's a fun awesome. event. So you, you've done some big stuff then. Yeah, this year I've definitely put the training in. So yeah. compared to last year with very little training, I did, you know, 13. So I think with this year's training, I'm pretty confident that I'll be yeah. able to hit that 100 miles. Your, your quads are ready for the stairway to heaven then. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so um, what is the best piece of advice you've received about backyard training, if you can think of something that kind of um, changed it up a little bit for you? I don't know if there's any, I think it's just about only thinking about the next lap, you know, not thinking about, oh, I'm out here to run 24 laps. It's just like, I'm here to run, you know, 4.167 miles. And then you just keep going and just running it one lap at a time and just practicing that and just getting out there and fighting it off a little bit, a little piece at a time. That's funny because I, I interviewed with Christina Bray, is it two days ago? And she said the same thing. Yeah. was one one lap at a time just think of it as four more yeah. miles yeah yeah because I mean I do that in other races too right like you run from yeah. aid station to aid station or I always tell myself like if there's three miles left it's like anybody can run three miles so and you can always run four miles like you can right. always do that so yeah. you just get out there and you run four more miles and you just keep running four miles yeah uh, well that's that's awesome if you had um if you had a tip or or two to give new runners for the course, other than that just kind of take small bites. Um, what would you suggest to someone who's coming out for the first time? Yeah, so the mistake that I made just during that first like training event was I thought with it only being four miles, I didn't need to carry water or food, that I could just have enough time every time I got back to my 
station to kind of rehydrate. And especially because you're running during the heat of the day, it is not enough. Like you've got to carry maybe not a vest. Like I think a vest can be too much, but like a good handheld or something because you've got to just keep hydrating uh, the whole time you're out there. Because if you get behind, then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And if it's, a, I mean, if it's anything like it's been this past week here in Michigan, oh, yeah. we've had some mid nineties, yep. you know, and which is not really typical for early June. No, no. And so who knows that we're going to have hundreds and <laughs> or it'll snow, you know, who knows, <laughs> but I don't know what would be worse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It might take snow <laughs> over the nineties, but yeah. yeah, it has the potential of being pretty toasty. So mm -hmm. Are you, if, if you had to have, do you have like a go-to nutritional item that you are consistently bringing to your events? Well, for events where I'm like carrying stuff, I do a lot of chia bars. So it's like just fruit and chia and that's it. And so I do a lot of those. I like the mama chias, but when you're carrying stuff, they're just too bulky because it's liquid. But I think with this like loop type of event, I'll definitely bring some of those. Okay. Um, and then... One time during a race, someone just gave me, it was just an avocado wrapped in a tortilla shell. Yeah. And it was like, it saved my life, like in that moment. Like I had that and I was like, oh man, this is the greatest thing I've ever had. So yeah. I think that's another good one to bring. You just got to mix it up between, you know, the carbs and the fats. And especially for a long day, you don't want to get bored with nutrition. Right. Absolutely. Do you use um, anything specific for hydration or electrolyte replacement? Because I think, you know, with our heat and I know from, you know, our first inaugural year, we had hot, we had some hot temperatures in 2019 and it's important to stay up on those electric lights. So yeah. you're not in I the really struggle. Yet. Like it seems yeah. like tailwind or anything like that kind of bothers my digestive system a bit. So I like to do, I have found these um, like pineapple and coconut, just fruit. Okay. Um, and so anything with coconut, like coconut so high in potassium, so trying to get those natural sources of it. Okay. Um, and then occasionally I'll do salt pills, but for the most part, I seem to do okay with electrolytes. I can definitely tell when I get low. Okay. Awesome. So mainly just fruits. Are you doing chips and stuff for salt or where are you getting your salt if you're not doing a tablet? Salt just in like some of the foods and stuff that I will bring. Okay. Yeah. But I'll have tablets just for like a safety, just to make sure I have something. And then some like noon tabs and things like that too, in case it, I feel like I'm getting off track a bit. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, here's a quick question for you. Um, if you, do you have a running bucket list? So you mentioned rim to rim to rim. Yeah. Which actually a friend of mine have, have, we've been talking about. Um, so that's one of those on my bucket list. If you have a running bucket list, what's number one on it right now? That's a tough one. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff on there. I think Scar is on there for sure. Okay. Like, I like doing these adventure things that aren't necessarily races, but just stuff that's like, this is a challenge it's out there for people to do. So yeah. I'm debating even doing Scar this October just because I don't have any races after September. I'm either going to be hurt from all the races I've done or in really good shape. And so if I'm in really good shape, I might head out and try and do that. And then, uh, um, as far as races go, like Leadville, I'm going to start putting okay. in for the lottery for Leadville. Um, yeah. Just that's always been on my list of like something that I just loved to love to try. Yeah, I think I've watched every documentary on Netflix that you can about <laughs> Leadville. Yeah. So. I've watched every documentary on Barkley, but I don't know if I'll ever do that. Right. I, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. BFC, maybe Barkley full. No, that's not really on my <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be a special kind of crazy to to yeah. want to do that. But right. hey, you never know, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll end up doing it. And you can research at this video. Right, I will. <laughs> so I went into it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Swedish Fish or Sour Patch Kids? I think Sour Patch Kids. Okay. And uh, Coke or Pepsi? Oh, Coke, definitely. Okay. Um. If you had to say one thing to your competition, what might that be? Jeez. No, I guess good luck. I mean, oh, it. you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everybody to, like, the, the backyard cell race is more about everybody working together, you know, and, like, getting everybody far until it's, like, yeah. the last two. And even then, it's still working together to get, you know, that ultimate distance. So it's... Yeah. It really is like, let's all go out there and let's just crush this thing. 
It's interesting you say that because, you know, when I first, when I first started looking at backyard races, I never thought of it as a team kind of, yeah. you know, um, sport like that. And it wasn't until um, last year's bigs. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. But I was really like, realized. Yeah. Yeah. It is a team thing. Absolutely. And, and about not carrying each other, but kind of like carrying each other, yeah. you know, um, to see how far you can go and to support everybody else. Because, you know, with this race, you can only go so far as the second to last person standing. Right. So, um, so yeah, but it wasn't until last year that I was like, oh, yeah, I guess uh, we don't have to be that competitive. <laughs> Not until well, the end. the last two to compete. You know? yeah. we'll just After them. they've gotten far enough. Like once they get past like 48, then they can start like, okay, you quit. No, you quit. Right. right. <laughs> when will it become serious? So, so yeah. yeah. So do you have a prediction, if you are all knowing, um, do you have a prediction of how many laps will be our record or our winning lap this year? So last year, 28, I believe, was yep. what Sarah did. And that's a that's um that's our record at Odalaz for most laps um, so far. Do you think we're gonna get there? Do you think we're gonna go above? Oh, I think it'll go over forty eight this year. I think okay. with everybody that's coming, and then just like the energy of backyards, if that makes sense. But like with the new record being broken, and just people seeing what's possible, because it's so much of it's mental. And now we're like, I mean, after seeing what was it eighty something. The yeah. other day, it's like, no, eighty one was of course, it? Of course, we can do forty eight. Of course, we can. Right. I, mean, I don't know if I can, but <laughs> somebody can. <laughs> but who knows? You know. And so it's just. I mean, we'll see what the day brings us. And but I'm 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 hoping for over forty eight. That's awesome. Well, hey, my, you heard my timer go off, girl. We are. That, that is it. <laughs> um, I thank you for joining me, and um, I can't wait to see you and meet you in person uh, this July. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. All right. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.